So first, first what I did, I started MySQL just for the verifying my data is written or not. Okay, and I started my PySpark shell by okay. minus minus package statement, and I have to give MySQL connector. Suppose you want to write the data or read the data from MongoDB, Cassandra. So that package connector you have to use. There are oh. different different package connectors. So you can see here, like Mongo is there. Okay. Spark Kafka, SQL is there. Kafka, I want to do right. Kafka, okay, and Cassandra, okay, and MySQL. So whichever you want to do, last picture, last picture. Okay. Next thing is once your PySpark shell is started, now you have Spark session. You have so this is your Spark session, right? So mm -hmm. first you have to read uh, some CSV file. So I have uh, some CSV file. CSV file, write data, print, 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 we need to do import, but this import we have to read the file from the path. So I have to read the file and this is a DB property. And I have to create and this final one is a DB right. So these are the lines. So I have to I have to just set the property. So here Suppose my file is I create a test of CSV and I'm keeping it through. Maybe CSV file is a common. So this is the data. So this file location, what is the location of this file? This file is in this location. So I have to use in my code. I have created file. I'm just keeping it the location. So I have to do file colon triple slash file colon because local file system file you have to read like okay home test and the file name is test okay in for schema two I'm making it me like I want to read the column padding. Header equal to two. Okay, right now, header is not there. I will add the header also. So it will be my header. So I will add the header line. So first is ID, then name, and the city. Into that, script Y, and the one. So I add the header. This is the first one. So when I read this, I will get the data. So in my PySpark chat, we go to the Okay, now DS So I'm getting a data graph. Okay, ID name city, and this is mine. So if I want to add new column by DS equal to DS dot this column, and so I want to add a new column that city is in.
half over the other or I want to use the exactly the same part to be a stock called like city column value one in the period. Oh. This works right now. I say yes, so yes, so yes, so show bracket because if you don't do back, it means it will not show, it's showing like an object, but it mm -hmm. is not showing the result. But when you do the top so now you see city also the same because I give in the column as a city. I have added the column. So this transformation you've done. Now you want to write this result to the MySQL. So what change you have to do here? Here is my local mode. Okay. That is is my default code. And I will check what is my database, right? So there, there already one scoop database there. So I can use some existing database. This and here show tables. So all these are the tables. So I will change the other database name. So this will JDBC URL it will set, and this mm -hmm. URL will come here and table name. Okay. So say and here the username password. So this is the username password of. Password is I'm using here. Password is the password okay, because password is my password. Okay. So I set all this property. So, first I run this is a dictionary. You are writing I think this is value. I'm creating a dictionary, I'm creating a first dictionary. So, here I created a dictionary name is db underscore property. Next is I'm creating a one variable jdbc url. Okay. And this JDBC URL, I will set. Now I'm using df dot whatever my df is there, right? JDBC is a function. So there are the different ways are there format dot JDBC you can do or directly write the JDBC function. Okay. And URL is a JDBC URL, table is the table. And mode is like you want to append mode every time the data will be keep appending. Or mm -hmm. you want to override, so you can define the table is not there. So I will go having option. Okay, this is some initial character. One initial character, the same point. When we are getting this exception, right? This is from the database getting the exception. And uh, I think some UTF character we need to change. So when we are saving the data, we have to, I think when we are giving database here, we have to give some UTF-8, okay? So I'm trying to find the exit that UTF-8 character. When you add this, you will, when you say extra, you So I was saying some character encoding is done. So these things will certificate will not give, okay? Because uh, because it is it is giving just the clean code, right? Because this what the data database issues are there. So those issues it will not tell. Those issues we if we ask again this issue, like unknown initial character thing of this error, then the certificate can give the solution for this, right? But you have to ask separately. Whenever you get the issue. So you just search that issue like when you are, and it is taking the context of your right last uh, search. Okay. So 
it will understand okay you have done some uh, searching and uh, you got the error right while you are executing code okay so it is saying this is the issue of character set being used by the mysql server or within jdbc connection in the application so it is saying one thing is update the jdbc driver like my driver is uh, like suppose jdbc 8 but i'm not using 8 i'm using jdbc 5 only so it has given another solution is whenever you are preparing your jdbc url use this character and go i was saying now uh, utf mm -hmm. okay. so this part you have to add okay oh. there are other sql solution right suppose in sql you are doing or like you are creating a some configuration file so different different like now you can use okay so and if you are using the higher version of the jd like mysql like JD, mysql 8 so you have to use this driver so, so my driver is different my driver is a jd this mysql 5 version okay. so i think the problem is related to utf this correct so, so we have to we have to set it here and put in the so this line i have to run it again so i see this is this um, again i have to run more still i have not got the table issue see i told you right table is not there right i didn't create the table right i gave the mm -hmm. now i'm going to check in my my sql db check for show table the table is created or not so my table is created and i say select start from my table can you see the yeah. same data yes. this is for like the etl code you did it like you okay. read the data from the csv of this that is a reason like you can create a some ingestion framework right you can read data from any file system right suppose this data is not coming from the csv it is coming from the JSON file, or it is coming XML file, or it is coming from SQL database. So whatever source is there, but you will be getting a data frame only. Once the data frame comes, means it will be a tabular, right? So format could be anything, like CSV is a comma delimited format, JSON is a key colon values format, XML is a node format, right? Like this format is there, right? The tag is there, EMP tag, like this format is there, right? But when data comes in the data frame, it becomes tabular, row and column. And the row and column data again will convert into the that particular type of format. Suppose you want to save as a JSON file. So you will say JSON and you just give the uh, <clears throat> some test for JSON. So in your same local directory, because you are not giving a complete path. So it will save in the some local directory. This data frame will save as a JSON file. Okay. So when you run this command, this part should. Well, code we have to give. Actually, it is uh, some path I'm giving. Exactly, it's not creating a name as a test.json. Generally, it will create a name with the directory with this test.json. Okay. So even if I give dot JSON, it is no use. Okay. Because file is always it creates with the its own naming convention. Okay. So now file is safe. So file is on the same location, right? Where this uh, uh, PySpark shell I started, I started in the my home directory, right? So that location my file will be safe. Okay. I started the, my PySpark shell in my user home okay so this test folder i will find it if i go to my home so i started PySpark shell in my home directory so i started my so i have to see through what is the last modified to test so 
Okay, what I can do, I can again write and I take the path slash and there is a directory test. And this test I say test for go to test one. Saving, but okay, okay. Uh, I should get the file code because it doesn't understand the local file system without giving file code and triple flash from the other test. directory is already seen. So the directory should be new. Now it is recognizing. So whenever you gave now, right, any directory, so you should give the last directory is the not present directory. Okay. Suppose I say test slash test three, because in the test one folder, in the test folder, there is a, there is a test CSV is there, but there is no test three, right? So this is a new directory. This is a new directory. So you should have the last directory, the new directory. See, now it's uh, created the test three directory. It created, and when you go inside this, this is the JSON file is created. And this JSON file you open, and you see those two record are incoming in the JSON, right? Data frame that right to them. And this same file, you can read again. Suppose this file I want to read. Okay, I want to read this file. I will take the property from this file. So this file location is this, right? Or even if you give the directory location, it will read the file, okay? So you say here, <clears throat> df is equal to start.read.json and you give the path, right? So file colon triple slash you should always use. Otherwise, it will not recognize your file system path. So three slash is needed, means one slash is for the home directory okay so file colon double slash slash home this 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 test three so test three directory nothing else only json file is there okay so i'm just giving test three i'm not giving the json file so i'm but i'm telling here the dot json function and then i do df dot show df dot show function can you see same data frame I'm getting with the JSON file? Yes. Correct. Right. So here I'm telling JSON, right? So if you have multiple JSON file also, so all file will be there. If you create the copy of these JSON files, okay? Suppose you create same JSON file you create. Right, multiple JSON files. No matter what is the name, okay? But all are the JSON, right? Now, I do the same command I run at again. I'm just giving the directory location. Okay. Now I do show. See, all data is coming. Right. Okay. So I can read the JSON file. I can read the CSV, get the data frame. And this data frame, now I want to write in the MySQL table. So in my table, there is no primary key. That is the reason it will allow, right? ID is duplicate, so it will allow. But suppose if I have created my own table and I kept it, ID is a primary key, then you will get the error, right? Because it will not allow, because here in data frame, data can be repeated. Here some group by operation also you can say, like suppose I want to write a SQL query. So df dot, first you create a temp table. Okay, suppose you want to do the 
Uh, there are two ways, right? One is the data frame operation you want to do, or you want to do Spark SQL. So if you want to do Spark SQL, so place thank you. So for that, you have to create a one temporary table. Okay. And you can write very easily SQL queries. Now you write spark.sql and you say, like, I want to do select count star. Uh, <clears throat> so I say on the ID count star. Okay. And group by. So what will be the table name here? From T1. From T1. And group by, you know, right, whatever column you take in the select, you have to take in the group by, okay, group by ID. So this query, what it will do, how many times one, how many times two, only one or two is there. So how many number of times one and how many number of two will come and then you want to show the result. Can you see 114, 214, okay, like this is, you can give the alias, right, like suppose you want to say this is as id count some name you want to give so it will be displaying the name okay id count so this kind of now this result you want to save you can save or suppose this result you want to write in the mysql you can write or this data you want to write in the data frame directly the data frame can be directly written in the mysql and now the same data you want to append in the mysql already you did df dot so data frame so here this is the same data frame right this data frame right so now this data frame df has this data the last data we are able to see in the data frame is this 28 row because it's showing default 20 row because default is a 20 okay if you want to see more row so you have to pass in the show function the number like how many rows you want right so as many as row will come, but if you don't give anything, it will come to me. Now I'm append mode, I'm writing it. If you do overwrite, so this data frame result will go. This data frame, right, 20. So this result will not go because you have not overridden, you have not created any variable of this. You just simply doing show, right? Just for information purpose, you just do the show function, but you have not assigned to any variable, right? Okay. When you do data frame dot write at the same MySQL table, now you will see 30 rows. So 28 you appended and two were there before. Now is a 32, okay? So same, you can do the select queries here, same select queries work here, right? Okay. Because this is a SQL only. And another way is uh, the data frame operation is there. Suppose instead of doing this Spark SQL, you want to use a data frame API. The data frame API is data frame dot group by operation is there. Group by, and you say in which column, you say ID is a column, then you want to do the count function, okay? <clears throat> After this count, you say select, and uh, definitely whatever column you use ID, so that will come. And one more column will be created as a count column. Okay, so count column is created for this count uh, star, right? When this count is doing the so count, this count star, the count column is created. So when you do this, select and dot. So can you see? Like after the same thing is coming, the difference is here. Here, here count. Bracket one is coming if you don't give alias, okay? And here, it is automatically coming the count. So it is taking the count function is taking the alias count automatically, okay? If you want to rename this count, <coughs> so you can use with column rename. So there is a method with column rename, and you say, I want to change count to ID count, okay? And I say, I want to draw column ID. So it means like after this you show, so you will see only one column and that will be ID underscore count. Because first you renamed it, 
count to id count and drop it this id so only one column is left okay so these are all there right suppose you want to drop the null values or you want to do map flat map filter there are many transformations are there like group by aggregation so i showed you the aggregation group by so same thing you can do with the queries also right uh, count star and uh, some some function you can do like i want to do the sum based on the id so it will do the sum of id okay so this will you do right suppose sum of in the sql query in the sql query you just say here instead of count you say id column you want to sum so you're getting on the one is one fourteen and two is two that is twenty eight so sum is there okay and uh, you want to use having clause right you can say i want to write uh, say having and i want to say this uh id underscore count value is greater than 20 so only 28 is done so this kind of condition suppose where condition so so having clause is always used in the sql that is a sql thing not uh, sparse like whenever you are using having is used in the group aggregation column like sum of ids count star on those columns you can use having but suppose some column which is not part of your id but still you want to do some but here are the two column only so we cannot apply the where clause right so if i say some column okay let's try this one by id count i am doing this and the where clause i say after the from clause I say where id equal to I want one and uh, I say here both the one right so I say 10 I guess so when I say 10 so definitely both will come but id equal to one when I'm giving so only id one will come right so where and having both we can apply right okay so this kind of way we can do filter, right? We can do filter. Okay, and we can write the data to the database. So we can read the data. Suppose I want to read the data from the MySQL DB. So we can, same thing here, like I'm using this uh, DF dot write. I will use the uh, spark dot read dot JDBC. Okay, so that command I can use here. So I will get the data frame, spark dot read dot JDBC. Same, I will do this parameter things. So read JDBC, but append will not come because append is for writing data, not for reading data. Read dot JDBC, it's all fine. This is fine. This is not fine. I think this parameter. These are the minimum parameters like URL and the DB properties and the table. Okay. Now I'm doing the same connection. I have already connection, right? Okay. I have connection with this URL. Everything in my connection is there. Right? I'm going to read the my table in the scoop database. Any other table also I can read. I say I have, okay, first we read this table. And I say this name is Suppose I don't want to override my this data frame. I say df one. Oh, from and when you say df one dot show, the same data is coming, right? Okay, I show you like any other SQL DB we take it. Okay, okay, so we take it like okay, we take it. Uh, employee three department table so department table i want to read so i have to change here just my table part here i say and now df1 earlier df1 is overridden now this df1 dot show 
this is the ID and name is done, right? Department ID, department name. So if you say any other table, And here so this is this is the this is the employee seven table. Um, now this data I can save it same way like df one dot csv file I want to save. So df one. So last time I save it JSON file. Now I want to save. What right uh, dot. So this one in the I, I will change the directory because you, you know right I have to create a new directory because that is the mandatory thing. Otherwise, if I try, it will give me the error. Directory is already empty. Okay. So just see get CSV. Okay. And now you check in the directory. In the test directory test four is created. And now this data is coming like multiple CSV, but you want still one CSV, right? Because that they, they have distributed data, okay? With the partition that it is created, okay? Because some CSV file has five record, 10 record like that. I want to open in the notepad. This is having the four record. This CSV having four record. Like this, it's a, yeah. but I want to make it a one single file. So there is the one fullest function is there. So just we check the fullest spelling. Fullest, right, data frame. So when we do data frame dot write dot fullest, so we do fullest one. So it will create a one single file. So data frame dot fullest one. Okay, so when you copy this and add here after data frame, you will use your fullest. Okay, and here you change again the directory because this directory is already created. Let's say test five. Okay, now you go to the test. Test five is created. Now only one single file. Now open this file. So all the data in a single file. Okay. So this this type of things you can remember, right? When we are uh, saving a file, right? Multiple file I don't want to save in a single file, right? So there is a partition by clause also there. We can save like all the one related data, like partitions, right? Okay. All ID one in a one file and ID two is a, another file. So partition by clause, so data frame dot write dot partition by. So in that case, we will not use the fullest because it will be decided by the partition. Partition by data frame. We want to write uh, like partition side. Right? So data frame dot write dot partition. So last time we try here data frame dot partition by right? right? Now we have to use this partition by after so. right we come first not right okay this directory is already there so you should remember the directory will create it whether your data is uh, uh, like uh, right or not it doesn't matter but directory will create first Okay, so first it create directory, then it will write the data. So 
So even you are getting error, but but directory will be always created. You should always be there. So to the test six. So now ID one, ID two can clearly see. So ID one he is having again here we can use a police because I want to like combine the file in this case. Do it. So data frame dot police, right? So this police we have to this police to particular. So, it is the partition partition polis. Mm -hmm. So, into partition by polis. We should use this way. It will create uh, in the data frame like two partitions, V partition one. Okay. And then okay. V partition, the data frame. Before writing, Created one file. The police is applying. No, police is not. So it is repartition. I think this data frame is still. Internally, it's doing for the processing purpose, I see partition. Okay, so like we can uh, write the data in multiple files or partitions, like we can save and you can do various things like two data frame i want to combine okay tf and df1 right so we can use union but union the condition is the number of column should be the same like number of column should be same suppose one df is this and i create another df1 so i just gave df1 from df i am creating another df df1 now the two df are there so now i say df2 so df2 equal to df1 dot union df and uh, df2. Now if I do df2 dot count, so it should be double, right? 28, 28, 56. So the union we can use to come back. But union should have the number of columns should be same, otherwise it will not go to the union. Okay, so try this one. Okay, this is the way like you can read data not only from the MySQL, you can read data from Hive and a lot of tools like we can integrate with this part. Okay, I'll give this code and uh, this command you can see. Okay. Actually, this history is not there, but there is a one. Uh, but I can print the. Uh, 
can see the command output like wherever the errors are coming that you can ignore. This is complete. First, you have to start the PySpark shell, and same thing you can do in the your uh, PyCharm ID. So PyCharm you have to download. You want to do the same practice in the PyCharm. So first of all, you should have PyCharm. I tell you, you go to your home directory, like you download the PyCharm. You go to the and PyCharm community version. You go PyCharm community addition download. Okay, that is a free thing. Okay. Go here, PyCharm community addition and uh, download this star file. Okay, once you download the star file, then starting how to start this. Once you download the star file, right, you will extract it. And how to start it, I'm showing you in the software, like in my software, so it's okay. So when you go to your software, so I copied here already. My PyCharm is this one, PyCharm community. So here you go to your bin, and there is a PyCharm.sh. So you simply start a terminal here and start this PyCharm. Okay, when you do this, your editor will start. Okay. And once this editor will start, same code, we can copy paste it in our PyCharm. But PyCharm, you have to do one setting for uh, running a Spark code. Normal Python code you can run, but for the Spark code, you have to do one setting in the PyCharm you set up. So first you open the PyCharm. So you can see the my PyCharm is there. Okay, this is my PyCharm that I Py PySpark project. So first you create a one project here. So how to and you have a Python should be there in your Ubuntu. Okay, the PyCharm is needed Python. So what you need to do. file or you want to create a new project <coughs> new project option is there so you can create a new project and this new project is taking your the python version right what python is installed on my okay? and uh, it is giving a name of the project is the default name is taking python project so i just in the name and create button it will create a one new project. It is asking new window or this window. Let's say new window. It has opened a new project, empty project. So suppose I want to create a one PySpark code. Right? Python. So this is the one default py file comes automatically. So this py file you can directly run because this one is a python code normal python so you just run file in python console so it will print uh, this file so it will print it is printed right so this is printed now i want to how to there is a like how to add the library right uh, for the PySpark code. The PySpark code will not directly work. Okay, so we have to uh, go to certain the file is having the file is having to go and uh, there is
Okay, project. That's all. So there is a project which comes here, and project structure is wrong. So here you see, if you want to run the PySpark code, so you have to add content group, and you have to add your where is your PySpark is there? My PySpark is in. Okay. three point two point three and this one has Python folder and Python folder is having here. So this lit path is here. Okay. okay. The project is the first when I'm writing a country actually it added the software. So it's both. Right. So these two lakes will sell one is a P by the source here and one is a price value. This tool will be tied here. Okay. Now in this code, I want to write a Python code. So price part code. So, this was a thing. So now you see any number of compiling. So only one problem will come, right? That is MySQL, right? Because MySQL connected job, right? Uh, how to provide in the other one. One way, like we can install MySQL Python connector. That is the way. Or if I'm using, um, let's go. Uh, oh. Python. So basically, like problem will come for the MySQL one. Like MySQL. Driver, right? Because my signal driver, like for the connection, right? We need a driver jar. So, how it will take it in the intelligence? Okay, so suppose I'm writing the code. So, Okay, so it is saying like you can write this one and then you can do the spark submit. Okay, so then you can do the spark submit command. You can do run the script. Run the script, you can run the script within five squad, like other fighting script. 
Oh, okay. Some space, like you can give the your jar. My jar is a MySQL connector file. So, the jar package you are giving. So, this will be, it will be taken from the, the Google, right? It will take, because we are using Spark jar packages. So, so in the config, I need to set. Okay. So in the Spark setting config. Here I have to create a Spark session. Now it's coming in my file. So that is fine. This is JSON So one thing is I need this spark session, right? Because if this spark session will not be there, I cannot set because in the in the spark shell by default is there, right? A spark session. So I don't need to worry about that. But here when I'm going to do um MySQL, right? So MySQL, I need uh, this uh, MySQL connector and five point. The version of my system. So 5.1.3, the version of the my system. Okay, and I will give this spark in our here before the spark. See, now spark session is not finding. So everything needs an import statement, right? So if I click here, it will give the suggestion. Five spark, six twelve spark, fifteen. This one, you can put another input statement. So I'm getting a spark session. So this spark I don't need. This is a five spark spread. So this one I'm doing. Now everything is good, right? So data frame dot write my table, same thing, my SQL is installed in my local. Now I run the system. Same package statement now, downloading the my SQL connector job, right? Downloading. It's a runtime download. Okay. So how can I know is it uh, done or not. So I just change the table. Okay. So the previous table has been continued. So my table one, two, three, I did. It is done. If I'm not getting error, it means okay. okay. Here it is not able to see for new table. I think we need to show okay. Read operation. So read we should do later after doing the right. Okay. Then only I can. So here, because last time it was doing because my table was there. My table one, two, three, I create. And then I read the data from two. Just I give the different name. And then I do clear for. I can see the data, right? What data I written? The data I can see here. I run. You can see your data is printing after the DF. Again, and we can verify it in MySQL. Table one, two, three. It's correct, right? Okay. The table is created and we are able to read data. This is the bidirectional operation. 
like you can read and write the paper. And further, you want to save in the CSV, JSON, or you want to write anywhere, or you want to read from anywhere, so you can do all. So here, only thing you have to remember here, if you are using Mongo Kasinga, so you have to add the jar on Mongo. If you are using any other uh, database like classic that you are using, so you have to add the config table. Okay. If you are using Scala, so Scala is you are using form.xml because there is a Maven problem, same like a Java. So there is the Okay. So this this code you can run to set up the entire PyCharm and set up in your uh, like five part shell. And the third way is we can run the this main py file I can run in the Spark Summit also. If I if I go to any location here, suppose I create menu. So I just copy the same code. When I say spark summit. So you can give here package package statement there. The same package statement you use, right? Okay. So even you don't need to give this one. Okay. Or it, it will work, right? I think then you don't need to give this. Just simply do test.py. Just do run the spark summit command for your job. Now so output will be same everywhere, right? Just a three what is the okay, the driver is not able to find. I think through this editor is uh, able to do, but here we use minus minus package statement, same path right. People package statement also you can give from a couple of people. So it's a test of you right? Yeah, see. After you append it, right? So second time now when you are running, third time you run, so two more record will come. It will be like two plus two plus two, right? So like four record already there and two you appending. If you use overwrite, so you will get only two, one and two, right? But it is keep appending. So in your table, the records are keep appending. Now it's a six in the same thing. Okay, so this one you can run in the Spark Summit. So you can run in the IntelliJ, the PyCharm, or you can run in the, so these are the two development way, PyCharm and Spark Share. But when you are testing in the server, right, you are server, your uh, edge node, then you will use the Spark Summit. Okay. okay. When your final testing you are doing, right, you will use them. Okay. So set up this all three ways and test same program you run in a different, different way. And uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Any question? Anyone? Try this, like, see, his task is not part of it now, but I told right okay, interested and you want to do. And follow in the classroom links, right? All integrations are there. I already shown to you. So you can see over there other, you can try, right? See, if you check there and then you can try different, different other integrations, right? Five integration. Okay, so if you un understand how the integration is done, so one is in this patch one, Training October batch and one is this, this batch. These two links having a different integration like MongoDB, Cassandra, classes. It's a very pretty small, small code and videos also there. So it's just very small, pretty code, right? Like, but you should know a little bit about the Cassandra, right? What is the key space, table, and then you start the connectors, okay? And then you write uh, some Spark code. But this is a Scala code. So code is not a matter, right? You can just copy this code and say convert to PySpark. So you will get the PySpark. Okay. So, so. But function wise the same, right? Read and write functions, right? So you have to either read the data or write the data. Okay. So 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll connect tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.